What is up everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in the month of December of 2019. And as you guys read in the title, we're also going to be breaking down the natural gas report, how you guys did today, how DGAS did, and obviously how natural gas did in terms of a technical perspective and I'm going to be giving you all my point of view on the overall market here and whether or not I think there's more upside so all I ask from you is if you enjoy the video hit that like button consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me and the strive smart discord group chat as well as the strive smart Facebook group those are linked down below if you want to be further connected with our community so right now there are about 22 minutes left in the market here and the S&P is currently up $6.03 up 0.19% and on this one hour chart we can see here we hit 3150 we had those couple of days of selling right the correction that we've been talking about and since then we've bottomed out at 3075 we've broken above the 180 SMA held it as a support yesterday and today guys despite the fact that we pulled down in the morning right you can see that on the daily chart we actually held that what was it the 180 SMA yet again and now we're closing it seems like we're looking to close here in 20 minutes on a very bullish push and you guys can see it here we pulled down again like I said from there it seems like we held the 180 SMA on the hourly chart now we're looking to gap up and potentially break the resistance from yesterday's session and from the beginning of today's session which is at around 3120 so I think if we break this level and especially if we gap above it tomorrow from a technical perspective that's extremely bullish on the S&P 500 and ultimately guys I think if we break above that 50 SMA here on the hourly chart that is another bullish um, thing that I'm watching out for as well for this S&P 500 so it seems like the bulls are taking charge um, yet again you know this four hour chart looks very bullish in my personal opinion and again that 3120 level um of resistance is quite critical as well for this index the Dow Jones right now up 46 points guys up 0.17 percent we talked about how throughout that period of correction those two three days that we sold off the Dow went from 28170 down to about 273 which just happens to be an old all-time high from a couple of weeks ago and the fact that we held that as a new support we gapped up now it seems like we're fighting with that EMA trying to break above it that is a good sign here for the bulls but unlike the S&P guys you can see we're still trending below these moving averages so for the Dow to be in a full on uptrend and for it to really try to test those all time highs again I'd need to see it at least break above 27800 probably into the $27,900 level um, you know for that technical break there and looking at this hourly chart you guys can see this is looking like it's closing quite bullishly there goes that bullishly word again like I mentioned in a couple of videos ago is that even a word bullishly I doubt it but we'll run with it for this video again this is looking good because this is a higher low from the previous low but again in those longer term time frames on those longer term time frames and honestly on this time frame as well we need to see a break above 27.7 and a break above those moving averages which I think we could get here especially if we gap up in the morning again keep an eye on those futures tomorrow morning super important so the NASDAQ right now guys doing the best in terms of a percentage basis out of the three major indexes up almost a quarter of a percent here up $19.75 and on this hourly chart this is looking quite bullish and let me quickly clear this drawing set because I know there's a lot of mumbo jumbo there now 
now we can see it a bit clearer, right? We pulled down, we saw the correction, found a bottom, and since then we've been making the higher high, higher low pattern, and today's pull down got us to hold that 50 SMA again at a higher low, and now we're looking to test the resistance, which is at around 83.40. So I think if we break that level, break the 180 SMA, that's obviously going to be a higher high, the continuation of the uptrend, and from there, we may see further upside for the NASDAQ, and who knows, guys, we may be testing those all-time highs from that point in time. So in terms of the three major indexes, guys, that is what I'm looking at, and the NASDAQ, in my opinion, it's probably the most bullish, but either way, the S&P, the NASDAQ, all of these had a decent day-to-day, -day, a recovery day-to-day, -day, and uh, I'd be interested to see if this does move into tomorrow's session, and again, I'm looking at large cap pre-market and of course what those futures are doing so let's talk about what I did today in terms of my trading and let me know down below in the comments what you did for your trading as well as your thoughts on these markets right now and the truth is guys and like I've been mentioning over these past couple of days I've been cautious, and today was one of those days where I was cautious. The markets were kind of rocky back and forth. Again, we saw that big dump this morning, so I really didn't um, pull the trigger on any trades today, any new trades. You guys know I'm in Tesla. Um, I bought a couple of days ago. We, di uh, we dumped pretty uh, aggressively this morning. I didn't jump out of the position yet. Um, I'm in at around 333 or 332, something like that, so I'm not really down much on the position. I'm still in it again because it seems like we're holding this level 328 quite nicely. Maybe we bounce back up tomorrow. Um, this close that we're seeing is giving me hope for that. But again, if we dump below 328 tomorrow, hey, I'm not going to com uh, to complain because I'm only in with a small amount of my goal position and I'm okay with losing um, a little bit of that 10-20% position that I've built here on Tesla. And I'd only be down about 2 percent probably worst case scenario if we were to dump here um, and break that level tomorrow. So Tesla, I'm simply holding on to these shares right now. Yesterday, we talked about Shopify and Square. I was looking to take a position in those. Um, they didn't really set up today, right? Square didn't really do what I wanted it to do. It's really at a point where this could go either way, which is kind of nerve-wracking for me and leading me not to take a position, right? Because you can see on this hourly chart, this thing could either break out here, which would be a good sign, or it could dump. It's really in a point where it's right around on those moving averages. It's kind of tricky, um, almost in a wedge. Let's see. It's kind of in a, a, a wedge here. Um, you guys can see it, right? So I'd rather wait it out and see what it does, which direction it picks, and then from there, I'll make my decision. Shopify is another one that kind of consolidated at 370. Now we're starting to dump, so I'm not looking to enter quite yet. If we get down to about 350, that's where I'm looking to get in on the 50 SMA bounce that's pretty attractive in my eyes. So really all the stocks, a lot of them at least, that I was watching today didn't open up an opportunity for me personally. So I didn't end up trading. That's the truth, right? You guys had a bit of a run. I didn't catch it. Um, I did watch the natural gas report or rather watch how the uh, ETNs uh, reacted to the natural gas report, but I didn't take a position. And that's really all I ended up doing in terms of my trading today. Let me know down below what you guys ended up doing. So taking a look at the natural gas futures here, this is ticker symbol slash NGF20, the January contracts. We can see they're currently up two cents right now, up almost 1% on the day. And if we zoom in a bit, let's say to the hourly chart, we can see that overall, these futures contracts, they've been rallying, right? These futures have been rallying from the low of 222 or rather 227 to about 230 up to where we are right now at about $2.42. That's a percentage push of about five, I'd say four, eh, more like five to 
6%, right? Which is pretty, pretty good. But we're still trending below the moving averages despite the report that we got today and despite this green day that we did end up getting so far in today's session. And obviously, that is not too good of a sign from a bull perspective. As long as natural gas is trending below these moving averages, the bears are in charge. So what am I looking for? Like I mentioned in yesterday's video, to go long natural gas, to go long you gas in particular, I need to see this pop, right? Like I showed you guys in yesterday's video, you can see the arrow I made there. That is what we need to see. And again, we did not quite get that. So what was this report today? What was it um, entailing in terms of billion cubic feet, in terms of the inventory right now of natural gas? And before we even get into the numbers, let me show you or let me tell you rather where you can find this report. It's at ir.eia.gov. As you guys can see at the top here, or you can simply go to Google, type in natural gas report, and it's going to be the first two links, one of the first two links. Click that and you'll be able to see this. So right off the bat, guys, we can see a net change of 19 billion cubic feet. So we saw a withdrawal of natural gas of 19 billion cubic feet. And like I mentioned in yesterday's video, and like I've been mentioning, weather around the country right now is mild. And we'll talk about some weather here in the next couple of minutes. It seems like it's going to remain mild here over the next couple of days before we start to get some colder weather in about a week or two. But we'll get into that in a second here. But as of now, we saw a 19 BCF withdrawal. Last week, we saw, what was it, like a 29 BCF withdrawal. So we used a bit less of natural gas than we used last week, right? And we can see here, based on the different regions in the east, we had a 3 BCF withdrawal. Midwest, 12 BCF withdrawal. Mountain, 4 BCF withdrawal. Pacific, 7 BCF withdrawal. South Central, we actually had an injection of 8 BCF. Salt, 13 BCF injection. Non-salt, a 5 BCF withdrawal, giving us that total of, again, 19 BCF. And I mentioned in yesterday's video for my research, a bunch of uh, analysts were expecting a roughly a 35 to a 40 BCF withdrawal. So based on this, that's a bit of a, a neutral, or I guess you can say a, a more of a bearish report, if anything, right? And again, that's mostly due to the mild weather that we've been seeing. And obviously, like we saw in the price action of natural gas, it all makes sense, right? Mild weather, the demand hasn't been so crazy for natural gas production. There's a lot of it at this point, which is why we've been seeing the decline in the price. And most of the time, it makes sense. So let's talk about some weather here that could affect the prices of natural gas and these inventory reports over the next couple of weeks. So before we get into that, I wanted to let you guys know about a little promotion that Webull is currently running, where if you sign up using my link down below, Below, you get two free stocks valued up to $1,400 if you deposit $100 into the account. And it is a referral link. I get, I think, one or two free stocks as well out of it. And at the end of the day, who doesn't like free money, right? And out of the three new age brokerages, I guess you can call them, this is my favorite one from a pure trading perspective. Like I've mentioned before, M1 Finance, I love for investing. Robinhood, I I love for short-term trading as well, but it didn't really have a chart that I really liked in terms of a charting platform, but Webull on the flip side has everything in one. You have your charting software here, watch lists, you can see the individual markets, hot stocks, trends, hot ETFs, whatever it may be. You can screen for stocks, you can trade right on the platform itself, and you can also paper trade. You guys can see right now I'm in Neo stock on a nice little paper trade up 180 bucks. So you can do a bunch of different things on Webull. Again, from a trader's perspective, I think this is the best if you're looking at a day trade, swing trade out of the new brokerages. And again, that link is down below. Two free stocks once you deposit 100 bucks. And let's get on with the video. So as you guys can see here, the next few days between the December 5th date and the 11th, the central and southern US will be mild to warm the next few days with highs of 50s to 70s. It remains 
cool across the northeast for locally strong demand with lows of 20s and 30s. National demand will be quite light this weekend into early next week as warm high pressure strengthens across the southern and eastern U.S. with warmer than normal conditions as highs reach the 50s to 70s. However, very cold air will be pushing into the North Plains at the same time with lows of negative 10s to 20s, then spreading across the Midwest and East mid next week. Overall, moderate national demand through Saturday, light Sunday to Tuesday, then high Wednesday to Thursday. Like I said, guys, that cold front is expected to come here within the next 7 to 10 days based on what we're seeing here. So that is quite interesting. And that leads me to believe that in the short term, sure, right, we may have some more downside in degas. But as these are rather in natural gas and more upside in degas, but as we start to get more demand, hopefully from these weather, you know, the weather models that we're seeing here in terms of a lot of cold weather coming, we might start to see that breakout that we were talking about a couple of minutes ago, which would be what we're seeing here indicated by the arrow, a break above that 180 SMA and ultimately a reversal in the overall trend of natural gas. So in terms of natural gas, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Short term, we may have a bit more downside. I'm talking within the next week. Who knows, right? But ultimately, I think, and like I've been saying over the past couple of weeks, I think we'll see a reversal ultimately, eventually, right? We'll see it eventually, I think, but we just have to wait when it's going to happen, wait for when it's going to happen. And again, that technical break will be this move to the upside. So you guys, D-Gas guys, we don't really have to talk about those too much because, you know, it all, it all moves based on natural gas. So that's what I personally like to focus on, the trend of natural gas. Then looking at you guys and D-Gas, but you can see if we're looking at it on a technical basis very quickly, you know, D-Gas is still uptrending, holding that 180 SMA. If we get that dump on natural gas and we break above 150 on D-Gas, that could be the trigger to buy here in the short term. Maybe you guys, guys, again, if we break that 180 SMA on natural gas, this will end up breaking the 180 SMA as well, most likely, and a buy would be anything above $12 in my personal opinion. So let's talk about some other stocks very quickly that I'm personally watching right now that I want to share with you all just in case you find value in them as well. So to talk about some other stocks, guys, at V is one that I'm watching here, ticker symbol ATVI. I'm really liking the pattern that we're seeing here. Overall today, we're up 2% on at V, which is pretty impressive, right? Held a higher low on top of that 180 SMA today. Now all I'm seeing, or rather all I'm waiting for is to see a break above 55 bucks. If I see that break tomorrow, I think I could ride this thing up to 56 bucks or rather not 55 bucks because it's already in the 55 range. A break above this resistance, which I guess you can say is at around 52.20. And from there, a break above um, or rather a break to 56 bucks. That's where I'm looking to potentially um, short term trade it for about 1.5%. But ultimately, the overall trend here, which is what I'm looking at, uh, you know, from a longer term swing perspective, there's a lot of potential from 56, 57 bucks up to around 62 bucks, about 12% potential for profit to be exact on that one. So another one I'm watching is Chipotle Mexican Grill, ticker symbol CMG. If we zoom in a bit here, you guys can see similar situation to at V where it's on an uptrend, right? But it's at a point of resistance here where we dropped yesterday at around 820 and a couple of days ago, roughly at about 825. So what I'd like to see here is ultimately a break above 825. You guessed it, guys, and a test at 835. And if we zoom out to the four hour chart, you guys can see what happened last time we broke 835. Well, it actually happened multiple times. We ran up to 860, 855, 860. It's done that multiple times. So anywhere from 825 up, guys, that's where I'm looking to really enter into Chipotle Mexican Grill for a longer swing. I see a bunch of potential there. Neo stock ended up taking a little dump, uh, rather a pretty decent dump, but, but for Neo, really 6%, I feel like it's nothing, right? But for a regular blue chip stock, a 6% drop would be insane. But with this drop, we actually broke 
240, that level of support that I was hoping we would hold, we broke it, right? So now it's another level of resistance that we're facing, but we're holding a higher low on top of this 180 SMA today, which gives me hope that overall the trend is still an uptrend based on the past two, three weeks here of price action. So for tomorrow, I'd love to see it hold, obviously, 225, which it seems like it's already doing, and ultimately for it to break the EMA line and for it to, uh, you know, probably probably test 240 again but i'm not sure if we'll get that tomorrow uh we might get it um but hey that's what i'm looking out for and from there again ultimately i'd love to enter a position and sell out at about 270 that's the goal exit point in my opinion so if it does hold that level i'll most likely get into neo ticker symbol NIO. So another one is going to be um, Square, guys. We already kind of talked about this one. I'm looking to see where it breaks in terms of this wedge. Which side does it pick? If it breaks up, guys, that's going to be a buy signal. That's going to be a bull signal. And I'll buy at that point in time. Shopify is another one. I hope it pulls down to that 50 SMA. 350 is a good entry point in my personal opinion. I also want to break down gold with you guys slash GC because we've been seeing quite a reversal in trend on gold, at least on the short term. On the four-hour chart, it's kind of different, um, but on the hourly chart, we're getting a break of trend, right? We found a bottom at 1450. We've been breaking above moving averages. Now we're seeing a huge bullish pop here. This almost looks like um, a bull flag in a sense, right? Now we may continue this rally up, especially if these markets um, continue to be a bit rocky, a bit uncertain like they have been due to the trade war um, and really Trump like we saw a couple of days ago coming out and saying that he's okay with waiting until after the election um, to get a deal done with China which obviously the market does not like the market wants a deal right now if the market could choose a deal tomorrow or a year from now they're obviously picking a deal tomorrow right so gold a lot of upside in my opinion if those markets get rocky and what do I trade you know on gold well i don't really trade it a lot or anymore it seems like because i really haven't been trading it a lot recently but i used to trade a lot jnug and jdst when i focused a lot on my gold trading right and those two trade on gdx or based on gdx which is simply a gold etf that obviously tracks gold right and whenever this goes up gdx whenever it goes up i trade again i used to trade a lot haven't really traded it much recently um a bull etf which is jnug and this is actually a 3x leveraged etf and it goes up whenever gdx goes up so this could be a play in the short term especially if these markets get rocky and it's been doing quite well guys literally up 20 percent over the past couple of days which is pretty incredible and the trend on the four hour chart is starting to break out ever since we've broken out of that 180 SMA. So I'm definitely watching JNUG here. The inverse is JDST. Let's say these markets, they don't dump. They don't correct. Let's say they continue to rally up all-time highs, whatever. Let's say that happens. Gold will most likely sell off. Gold will definitely see downwards pressure most likely at that point. And JDST, it goes up whenever GDX and gold go down in price at a 3x rate. So that will be a good way to short gold. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you want to see further content from me, and let me know down below in the comment section what are your thoughts about the stock market right now, about these individual stocks I'm watching. What are your thoughts? I'd love to know down below in that comment section. And don't forget to join our Strive Smart Discord group chat as well as our Strive Smart Facebook group and to check out that Webull link down below if you do want to receive two free stocks absolutely free stocks by simply opening an account and putting in 100 bucks guys i appreciate all of you guys for watching as always peace out